So there, folks, welcome back. It's the final day. Can you believe it's the final day of the week-long previews you've been doing? I hope you've been enjoying them. Um, but yes, we recorded this one on the 30th of July, so anything that happened after that, we haven't covered. So if West Brom have brought in three megastars, sorry, we didn't talk about it, but... Yeah, you can leave your thoughts on that in the comment section down below. Again, fantasy football, it's the final... The se it starts tomorrow! Are, we, are you prepared? I'm not ready. I've changed my team about six times since I did the first team. Um, but yeah, get involved. Fantasy football, it's your final chance to do so. Uh, get involved. So, from me, Dr. Benji, enjoy today's episode, and I'll see you in literally seconds. Uh, enjoy it. <laughs> Right there, folks, welcome to the final uh, football chat with Ben. And finally, again, I've got three people with me. Sadly, we can get a Spurs fan. So again, if you are a Spurs fan and you're interested and you're in the comments section, let me know in the future. Uh, maybe we can get you on for some Spurs-based discussion. Uh, but I do have three men with me. First of all, uh, Lee, a.k.a. Foxy, we'll go with. Fox in the box. How, how are you, Lee? I'm good, thank you, mate. I'm good, thank you. Thank you for having me on. It's, uh, it's, a, it's a privilege, shall we say. It's a privilege. Watford fan. So you, you're a, Definitely. You're a, you know, your feelings are, you're feeling good at the moment, I would assume. Very good, very good, um, and very frustrated with the rest of the world pointing fingers at us for numerous reasons. Well, I can't wait to talk about it. Uh, secondly, we've got <laughs> Alex Newton on. Uh, Alex is a keen Instagram user. Is that fair to say, Alex? Uh, yes. <laughs> You're also the editor of The Baggies Way, uh, and it's a pleasure to have you on. How are you doing? I'm good, thank you. How are you? I'm very, I'm very well, thanks for asking. Very and good. finally, uh, the man, the myth, the legend, Paul Golden Holden FM. Paul, how are you? West Ham fan. And uh, we've not spoke for a little while, but it's nice to see you again. Good evening, Benjamin. How are you? I'm very well. I get still. I'm still well from uh, from thirty seconds well, ago. You know, I'm still you good. May have changed in the last couple. Thank of you for checking in. Now, uh, unusually, we haven't got a Tottenham fan. Sadly, although I know like three or four Tottenham fans, none of them are available to come on today. Uh, but we will talk about them anyway. I feel like we've got enough football knowledge amongst us. Agreed. Yeah, I reckon so. Yeah, I reckon mm, we so. Um, so they've made a few. Like last, we'll, we'll look at last season. They finished fifth. Um, they scraped it on the final day because Liverpool decided to go on holiday <laughs> instead of actually turn up at the Britannia, which was a shame. Um, they finished fifth, and Harry Kane was was the star of the show, Lee. Yes, indeed. Tell tell me how. What did you make of Harry Kane last year? Uh, wow. Um, looks unconventional, but um, <laughs> he does look unconventional. Does, very unconventional. Doesn't look like your typical football player. Doesn't like your your uh, your pretty boy image. But he seems to know where things will drop in the box. Um, I think it, there was a massive debate, wasn't there, along the season whether he was lucky or whether he was clever. Um, yeah. I think it was a. I don't know. I think there's a little bit of both, isn't there? I think the the form that he was in, he found himself in those positions all the time where the ball kept dropping, and you know he just slotted away. But they're saying no, he scored some worldies as well. Yeah, it got it got to the point with Hurricane last season when everyone was doubting it, and then everyone sort of went. He scored again, <laughs> and it was yeah, exactly, and, yeah. and it had got to April, and we all just accepted it. We were like, okay, he's had a good year, and then it became the conversation of, oh, he's massively overrated, which is a bizarre comment to make considering he's done it in one season, and mm. we're rating him on that season. So I mean, I don't know how a player can be overrated in that in that area. Um, Alex, what did you make of Tottenham? Then they were, it was a bit of an up and down season. Pochettino got them playing some nice stuff at times, and then at other times they just sort of fell at the final hurdle. What did you make of them? Yeah. When you play Tottenham, you never know what team are going to turn up, really. Yeah. Like the two games against Albion last season, we beat them 1-0 at White Hart Lane and then they hammered us 3-0 at home. So they've, they're very hot and cold. They've got some fantastic players like Kane, Lamella, Christian Eriksen. But, you know, sometimes I can be a bit dodgy at the back with the, the Tongans always got a mistake in him. Danny Rose as well. They haven't got the best defence. But... I think it'll be another season from of just middle of the road, won't hit top four, won't fall out the top six, really. Yeah, it'll be interesting where they finish. Paul, as a, as a West Ham fan, I'm sure you've got a lot of love for Tottenham. Oh, yeah. Um, so, so much. Apart from Kane, did you did you see much to convince you that they're going to have a good season this year? It was, was anyone a standout candidate? I know Loris has talked about a lot as being one of their star players, and Ericsson as well had a good year. Was there anyone for you that stood um, out more I than anyone else? That's the thing about Spurs. I don't think they really have... They should have stand-up players. On paper, they've got some really good players, um, like Lamella, Dembele, who just doesn't seem to, hasn't seemed to have done it for Spurs. Um, they've got some good defenders like Vertonghen, and they've signed Alderweireld now, haven't they? So yeah. I think that could be a really good partnership. They're both Belgian, so obviously they should have an understanding there. Yeah. Um, although I think they play full-backs for um, Belgium, I have a feeling. 
Uh, but I think that could be a good partnership and will solidify the defence. Yeah, you, um, ma- you mentioned the signs they've brought in. Obviously, uh, now I'm going to call him Toby for this, for Toby, the good of us all. If, anyone, if you want to go for his surname, I mean, feel free. But I'm going with Toby. I think that's. Uh, I think well, Southampton fans aren't that best pleased that he's not gone back to them and he's gone to, to join Pochettino and uh, and Tottenham. I, I think you're right, Paul. I think I think him and Vertonghen could strike up quite the partnership. I was I was actually surprised he didn't go back to Southampton. I thought that was a really good fit for yeah. him. Um, but he's taken a little a little bit of a step up, not a huge step up. But he's taken a little bit of a step up. Gone, gone to Spurs. Uh, I think it'd be good for them. Another player they've brought in. Curiously, considering they've got Carl Walker at the club, is uh, is Kieran Trippier? Uh, did you see much of Trippier last season, Alex? What did you, what did you make of him at Burnley? Well, Albion was linked to him loosely in December, January time, and I'd have really liked him. I think he's a good young English player, and that's probably why Spurs have signed him. He'll count as a homegrown player. And he does give competition to Walker, but like you said, they're a bit similar, really. So I don't know how much game time he'll get there yeah that's why it seems than... do, you think he's, do you think he's better than Walker Paul you yeah say? I think Walker's terrible at defending I think Trippier's better and I also think Trippier's actually better going forward he's got a better cross than him it's not as fast but that's mm. all Walker can do so are you, are you expecting are you expecting Trippier to start ahead of Walker Lee, Lee what do you think about that are you, are you expecting it to be a close rivalry because I would assume I don't know maybe it's just <sighs> the Premier League experience logic I, I, in I think they'll stick with Walker I think he's um He's been there well, for a good few seasons now, hasn't he? I mean, likes of when, like, Kyle, was it Kyle Norton as well came through? Yeah, yeah. I mean, let's be honest, Spurs love a, love a fullback, don't they? Love an English based fullback. Um, but I, I think they'll just stick with Walker, to be honest. Though I do agree that the bits that I saw of Trippier, I'd say he's much more of an all round player. I think um, Walker's just a speed demon. And then the game's played at such a pace in the Premier League, which everyone's completely aware of. Mm. I think Walker can kind of get away with it. Um, Will he get away with it for much longer? Who knows? You know, it might be the case of Trippier's thrown in there a few games and Pochettino spots that little bit of quality that he has over him and he gets that chance. But will he get that chance? You know, you just don't know, do you really? Yeah. Is it in, a, in a strange way, it's similar to the Harry Kane situation in that he played in Europe and that might be the same fate for Trippier. Exactly, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. Those those one or two mm. dropping matches and is he given that opportunity and does he take it? Mm. Um yeah, definitely. Yeah, well, interesting. Like, there's a few ins, but the outs are almost more curious to me. We've got uh, Polinio's left, Holtby's gone, Kapuwe's gone to Watford. We'll talk about that a little bit later on. Uh, Kabul's gone to Sunderland, Stambouli's left as well, and, uh, and Kiriches has gone as well. So there's been quite a few yeah. outs. Defensively, that's what, two or three players that have gone? And then Holtby, which didn't really work out, which I hoped it would, because when he came, I thought it was quite an exciting transfer. Um, and. It'll be interesting what they do. I mean, they've not brought a lot in, but they've got rid of quite a few. So expecting, obviously, we're, re- we're pre-recording. So in a week's time, the Tottenham team may look slightly different to what we're mm. we're looking at right now. Um, but yeah, I think Tottenham will be a will be an interesting team. Actually, yeah, where do you see them finishing? Uh, we'll go along the line. We'll start with Paul. Uh, where do you see Spurs finishing or ending think, up next season? Think about the same fifth or sixth, possibly seventh, but. Can't see them breaking into the top four. Are you expecting unless they make some signings? Are you expecting it to be a like a Liverpool, Tottenham fifth, sixth again? Yeah, I think sort of Spurs, Liverpool, Southampton, West Ham, possibly Stoke. <laughs> Sorry, I'm not. <laughs> it was very well put in. I didn't mean to laugh. It was just the way you did it so casually. Yeah, <laughs> well, look at the signings Stoke have been making. You know, they possibly could uh, could challenge for. Stoke wasn't the fifth, point that I thought was, maybe not fifth Stoke wasn't the team I thought you oh, was West funny Ham. for yeah, yeah it was the way you threw West Ham in there so casually <laughs> uh, Alex what are you expecting I'm from hopeful. Spurs this year <laughs> yeah, hopeful <laughs> I've got Spurs down as sixth um, just a little bit off topic I think Liverpool will finish top four and it'll be Man City to miss out do you yeah yeah Ooh. I think I think you're crazy, and I'm a Liverpool, <laughs> and I'm a Liverpool fan. But I mean, great. Uh, 25 goals. Oh yeah. my word! <laughs> It'll be loaned to West Ham during the January. It'll be great. <laughs> uh, Lee, what do you think? Think of Spurs? Where do you expect them to finish? I don't know. Just, I'm just having a little, quick look at their actual active squad list right now. I mean, thinning the squad down is probably one thing that they did need to do. Mm-hmm. Um, they had a big, not, not like a, a case of first team players, you know, the backups and so on. They had a lot of first team players in there, and there would have been, I guess, some some kind of disjointedness maybe in performances with changing a lot. But just looking at their players they brought in, I'm interested more from this. I think they'll finish around that fifth, sixth area. Well, I'm, I'm interested in whether like people like Alex Pritchard returning, Dilly Alley, will they mm. get game time? Uh, along with Kieran Trippier, they're in a similar boat, aren't they? Young English players. Uh, Kevin Wimmer coming in as well. He's coming in with quite a reputation from, I can't remember where he's came from, that's uh, in Germany, Cologne, wasn't it? Cologne, yeah, Cologne. Yeah, so, I mean, I... I, I <laughs> With a thinned out squad and a bit of consistency from Pochettino, I reckon they maybe push a little bit further, you know. Yeah. Maybe sneak into fourth. Ooh, but they, they they do need to be consistent, which I think is something they've always lacked as a squad, haven't they? 
Yeah, well, yeah, it, it's but that's the case with so many teams who are around that. So, and Liverpool are a great example of it as well. And Arsenal, mm. and Arsenal have got a similar issue, but a little bit further up. It's it's whether they can keep that throughout the season because because yeah. much like much like um, much like Spurs, Arsenal will do very well. Sorry, sorry, Spurs fans, I'm going straight into Arsenal while talking about you. <laughs> but uh, Arsenal will do very well at the start of the season. They'll start very well and they'll finish very well. But that middle period will just just undo them a little bit. And Spurs Spurs do that in a similar way, but it's almost more sort of draws when they should win and I'm not and Alex I hate to pick on uh, I hate to pick on West Brom here but it's like the the home loss to, to West Brom that's the kind of result that Spurs need to eradicate if they're going to get in the top four yeah. yeah. if you know what I'm saying anyway yeah. uh, so I think that's enough Tottenham chat because we've not got a fan I think we've done well there boys to be fair mm. considering there's not a fan here, I think we've done alright uh, but we'll move on to newly promoted Watford second in the championship last season and we'll, uh, we'll come straight to you Lee it's been and a very interesting summer. <laughs> it has been so far. I'm going to, I'm going to leave you as well. I want to leave you a good ten minutes here to talk about Watford because I, I think you've <laughs> it's got gonna, a lot it's to It's going to continue. I mean, just kind of. If, I know a lot of people will be uh, of the Premier League uh, not too familiar with the Championship and, and what happened in our season last year. But it was a very turbulent season. If anyone had said to us that they are uh, coming to the last game of the season, you would have been in the chance of winning the title. Uh, I think Watford fans would have snapped the chance and even even snapped the chance at being second. I was actually there the last day when we unfortunately lost it with the. 1-1 draw against Wednesday. Wednesday completely deserved that point. Uh, we, were, we were quite disappointed, but then the realisation, you know, we went up was a good thing. But throughout the season, it was very turbulent. We went through a number of managers within a number of weeks. <laughs> um, they went from heart conditions to uh, other things. But, you know, one thing that the Watford fan base, the people that are very close to the, to the club know and, and support is the Pozzo family who are in control of Watford and obviously Udinese and Granada as well. Yeah. Um, but we support what they do and then fans from the outside were picking it away at us all changing these managers isn't going to help isn't that isn't going to happen it's of course it's not an ideal situation um, but we were always confident especially when the fourth manager came in or the third or the fourth coming when it was um, and they removed him within a few days obviously realising this is the wrong appointment uh, and then we appeared up with Djokanovic who um, to his be fair to him he did really well uh, but as the season went on and, and we were checking on what he was doing his shape his tactics his changes uh, he was very dubious and, and you know I think the squad and the quality of the squad did pull us out of um, out of sticky situations like things like flu winning 4-3 I think it was or 3-2 away at Bolton after being 2 or 3-0 down with 10 minutes to go stuff like that and they weren't his changes particularly there were the quality of Vidra uh, Icarlo Dini and, and so on Um and then obviously we got promoted. Unfortunately, it was his last game of the season where we kind of threw it away. But I say it was, it was, uh, it, we, they deserved their point. And you know, Bournemouth fairy tale for them, really, wasn't it? Um, and you know, they, over the season they probably deserved to be champions. But to go up with several managers during the season, several changes of players during the season was a great thing. I mean, we are we are a multinational team, um, and that is the direction we're going to head and continue to go in. That that's a big um, a big grudge point for a lot of people that are looking at Watford. Um, and some Watford fans as well I must say they're not happy with the fact that we do we do look abroad but that's the Pozzo model we knew that when the Pozzos came in that in time it would happen what we did fear to start with was that if we were going to be that feeder club for Udinese and Granada but it's actually turned to be the other way uh, and now they're feeder clubbing to us um, which is interesting yeah. um, but last season so we went up second and you know, we'll take that obviously during the, during the market this year we've picked up 10 players this far and I believe there'll be more uh, we've chased another six or seven that haven't quite come off but they've been big 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 pushes you know people like Stanton and people like people that play Premier League football they haven't looked to secure the services of other players that are in and around where we are they've looked above um, yeah. bringing in the likes of Barami and people like that I mean players that they, I mean, that they should they shouldn't be in our squad you look at it the whole bass like Kapue one we mentioned on a minute ago uh, Prodel and Gerardo and all the other guys um, it's interesting what's going to happen this year who knows who knows it's 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 that gelling point in terms of the biggest thing I've heard is oh they're all foreign they're not going to gel they're not going to gel not going to communicate yet everyone's interview has been in English ah. so obviously <laughs> they have a common language yeah um, along with Sanchez speaks I believe several languages anyway yeah. um, obviously he's now our new manager and that's, that's another point that was in the pre-season about the sacking of Djukanovic there was never a sacking of Djukanovic his contract only rang on a, I think it was running on a six month basis or something like to the end of the season mm. um, and he wanted like a 200% increase in his wage and, and so on he wanted a ridiculous contract which basically was going to tie him in so if he got sacked because it flopped in the Premier League he'd have a massive payout and the Pozos are clever they ain't that stupid they're not going to give out these big wages and the, the gamble of okay let's let him go and try a new manager was certainly more appealing than the fact of tying in this manager who was unknown um, who's still unknown into a huge contract and potentially having to sack him after a few months and costing the club a lot of money 
Um, that's so, kind of a summary of where we're coming. So go, yeah, go, go. Yeah, so, so on your manager, yeah. <laughs> I mean, he's not, he's not coming with he's coming with some experience. He did he yeah. did he did okay at Atletico Madrid. He's, he did. he's coming from Getafe now after resigning from that position. Yeah. Do you feel like and, and this okay? What, what I'm saying is, you've seen Premier League teams of of Watford's kind of yeah. level bring in English managers, bring in managers that have been here before that know the league. Is it is it a concern? Because it's a big, there's been a big change in personnel at Watford this season, based mm-hmm. on the fact that there's going to be ten or so new players, players that, from from paper at least, look like starters. Yeah. So it's not like they're going to be bedded in slowly. It's like, look, we're we're bringing in a new team here. Does that unsettle what's already there? I, I guess there's. I've, I've thrown a few questions there. I guess you start with the manager. A manager. How do you feel about his his involvement and how, and what will he bring? Like, what what does he need to bring? Actually, that's probably a better question. What does I mean, he need he, to bring? He's he he needs to bring. First and foremost, we always had a problem with our defence, the, the solidity of that. That it was always, it was always a rocky, should we say? We played this we, under Dukanovic. We played a wing back system with uh, two centre backs, one holding midfielder that would normally drop in. Sometimes we play three centre backs, um, and it was always oh, we were never really solid there. So we needed to pick up somebody who was going to work with the defensive side of things. So obviously, as you well know, and any anybody can see goals in the Premier League, you're going down. Um, so we need we needed to solidify that. Um, Sanchez's record is is good, but you say it's not. It's not massive. He did very well with with Atletico. Uh, he won obviously the Europa League and so on. Um, but it's an unknown one. I mean, really, I, we don't know. Um, and the feeling between the fans is it's a good appointment. It's a better appointment than Jokanovic. But we'll see. During pre season, you mentioned about um, these new players are coming and they've all got starting positions. They've all started there or thereabouts. However, mm. interestingly, during pre season, he has stuck with a lot of the guys that are still here from last season. We haven't really sold anybody. No one's really gone. Um, the boys that were in on loan from last season from Udinese and Granada have now moved across on free transfers and whatever else and disclosed fees all yeah. that kind of stuff yeah. people claim there's some kind of money laundering going on or whatever. <laughs> it's not they're transferring players between clubs that they own there's no it's all above board I would assume anyway you're going to hope, um, you're going to hope by January I you hope to so. to I mean, there is, yeah. if we want to get controversial going back 20 years or so one of the Pozzos were involved in match fixing scams in Italy however this was a long 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 time ago and he's since been able to be within football and he's nothing's ever happened ever since and there's, there's been other shams and scams whatever from Italy since then so I'm sure he'll be thankful for you mentioning it <laughs> yeah, hey, there we go. I mean it's something that a lot, a lot of people have picked up but no doubt someone will come with eventually yeah um, anyway so um, the manager side of things who knows we'll find out as the season goes it's, it's it's interesting for people looking in as it is for Watford fans and how it's going to work uh, the personnel in terms of them being first team players they are all first team players without a doubt they should be walking into the first team throwing them all in at once Sanchez hasn't really done that he's kind of fed them in bit by bit uh, interestingly a couple of them have been away on international duty for instance some of the last last year's squad have been away like Leun has gone away been away with Mexico and has won the Gold Cup and, and so on so mm. pre-season's been a little bit not as settled as we would have hoped obviously players coming in every week and some players being out on international duty hasn't been helpful um, but he has stayed majority with the squad that played last year which was interesting we thought there'd be wholesale changes and the whole 11 would be very different when it actually hasn't been. Gomez has remained in goal despite the new guy. I'm not going to try and say his name from, uh, I think it's La- uh, Lithuania coming in. Uh, they've stuck with Gomez. They've stuck with the majority of the midfield and the defence. The big change has been probably Barami started a lot and Nayam looks like he's going to be starting in at left or right back quite often as well. Wow. Uh, Kapue has actually been really good during pre-season. Probably one of, our, one of the best performance-wise that we've had in the team. Uh, he's come with a lot of hate from Spurs fans, but, you know, looking at his record and the amount of games he played, I don't think he was ever really given that greatest chance. And, maybe, you know, maybe when you're in a team where you don't feel too valued, you don't play too well. Yeah. Um, and I think there's a little bit of that behind it. He's come in and you just watch the Watford YouTube is as active as ever right now. Player <laughs> cams and everything that's going on. And you just watch, just watch these 15, 20-second clips of the team and they look like there was a real togetherness in the squad. And Kapui is a big part of that. Yeah. Um, you know, lots, lots little crossbar challenges and stuff like that, where he's he's dancing around, and you know, it seems like a great atmosphere to be involved with. Um, but it's a big squad we've got, a big squad, probably one of the biggest in the Premier League. You sound um, positive, though. You sound you sound really upbeat about it. You don't sound. Oh no, yeah, I really am. Like, you, I sound, really you sound am. excited. And that's, oh no, very, that's, yeah, yeah, very uh, excited. And just what what is there for the future? I mean, if you tell us now we're going to finish like what fourth from bottom, survive by goal difference, we'll take we'll snap your hands off. We're not yeah. thinking that this squad is going to all of a sudden lift us into Europa League, push us above all those. Mid- it's not going to happen in, overnight. It's a long term project. The Pozzos have been in charge of or in control of Watford now for coming near four years, and it's yeah. only just started to happen because it's a long term investment. Um, we'll never be that. Even if we do survive and we push on and so on, we'll never be a top five, top 
eight team. It won't happen. Udinese aren't, have been for a short period, but they aren't, and Granada aren't either. The Pozos are a money ball thing. They make money and then they invest it back into you buying young players. Um, and then they sell on what they've had. I mean, just to name a few of the guys that they've sold from uh, Udinese over the years, they include likes of Gorklin in there, Sanchez, as in Alexis Sanchez, you know, Benacia, Candavara, there's loads. Mauricio Isla, at that, at Samoa. I mean, Juventus kick off Udinese, and I think that's what will happen to Watford in the end. We'll be, we are, we'll become a selling club. Uh, we're not at the moment because we don't need to be, um, but we will eventually become a selling club where the young guys that do come through, and there are actually some yeah. really good young, talented players at Watford uh, who you will hear about within the next few years. The, the main two being Denon Lewis and uh, Oguobi, who are absolutely awesome players at youth level. Um, both signed, uh, pre, well, one signed a pre-professional contract, one's already signed a professional contract. Um, but that comes from the Hartfield Academy, which you know even the likes of Ajax have been involved with, yeah. uh, or Ajax, however you say it. Um, so Watford, despite having this very multinational first team, have a solid foundation underneath the club. The ground improvements have been ridiculous. The ground looks absolutely gorgeous. Um, they've done so much work around the club, not just on the playing side of it or the coaching side of it. Um, so as a Watford fan, you know, right now, this is an exciting time. Yeah. Um, as not a Watford fan, you know, we're easy targets because of the way that we are and the way the Pozos work. Our scouting network is Unese's scouting network, is Granada's scouting network. It's exactly the same. And that scouting network that we in, we inherited when the Pozos came in has been active for five years. Arguably the best one in the world in terms of a scouting network. It, it is, it's in, up there with the likes of Barcelona. It doesn't, it doesn't as maybe wield such great results because Barcelona has much more of a, of a draw, much more of a, of, a, of a financial force. But it's growing and it's growing rapidly. Yeah. Um, I think the Pozos have made not I mean they haven't made but the, the clubs that they own namely Udinese in the last like seven or eight years have made over a 200 300 million pound profit on bringing in young players developing them and selling them on and they've also brought in players the likes of Di Natale who at the time was like 34 revived his career and look how much of a force he's been in the last couple of years I was going to ask Alex and Paul to add to this Watford chat I'm not going to bother because I think <laughs> I, don't, I don't think there's anything they could say which which would, I'm which would add to the debate. In, I'm interested in what they think, though, being fans of other clubs and so on. Because obviously, as you said on Twitter recently, I'm sure a lot of people have. I've been, you know, quite active in terms of defending the side of Watford. Um, yeah. but I haven't been to start with, but just seeing them. I obviously lost to Cardiff two one the other day. We experimented with a new formation, a couple of different things, and though know, people just are diving on us straight away. It's it's the sort of situation where you'll be judged by December. Yes, uh, and yeah. and people will decide then. Paul, what have you like I, I, looking at what from the outside? How do you see it? Um, I think it can go one of two ways. Um, other than that, staying up and going down. But I mean, they could either really surprise people and do really well with this team. I think Bayrami is an incredible player and will work his socks off in midfield. Um, but they could do a QPR because of the fact they've got a massive mix of players coming into the team, and it's unpredictable, and they may not gel together mm. very well. So. Could do a QPR. Um, yeah. It's interesting that you say QPR because we've been compared to QPR in a, in a different way to what you've done there. Um, you've compared it in terms of the nationalities coming together and, and that fusion of is it going to fit. Um, I don't necessarily mean nationalities. I just mean there's loads of new players. They could all be exactly, the same exactly, nationality. But, no, but, but, that's, um, but we've, been, we've been compared to QPR in terms of financial situation. Like We've given out big yeah. wages where we haven't at all. We haven't paid big money for players. And the most we paid was for Kapuwe, which was around six million. Um, mm. And we haven't given out big wages. In fact, we've turned players down which have accepted small contracts or small wage, small air transfer fees because they wanted big contracts. And we've, we've gone away from them. Um, so it's interesting that you mentioned it that way because I, I do I do agree and from the Watford side that's probably our big nerve point is oh is it going to fit but then you look at a lot of the players that we've brought in they've been a part of this this Pozzo family dynasty or whatever you want to call it for a long time uh, some of them haven't but they're coming in with I say that that English speaking um, language which is always helpful I guess yeah Alex have you got anything anything Alex come on have you got anything you can add to this <laughs> I'll, I'll, think, I'll take anything I think as a team coming up I think they've got to do well at home. They've got to make their home games, you know, because otherwise teams are going to go there and think, oh, it's Watford, it's an easy three points. But they have got some decent strikers and any team that comes up, they always say, you need goal scorers. But they've got the likes of Dini Vidra, who had a cameo yeah. loan season at Albion. And I thought he did look quite sharp. He never quite clicked at Albion, but I think he's been part of Watford for a couple of seasons now, I believe. So, yeah, coming on three or four actually. Yeah. yeah, just apart from that little that little uh, romance with West Brom in the middle, 
<laughs> romance. Would, would, you describe, <laughs> would you describe it as a romance, Alex? Was it? <laughs> it was, no it one was would do. Say, like, I think, as he's already said, it wasn't very successful for him. Yeah. I think it really clicked. So, uh, but came back to us and started scoring again, which is good. Yeah, we'll go through. We'll just we'll give. It's kind of it's a bit sort of tongue in cheek. This, but where do you think they'll finish? We'll go along the line again, uh, Paul. If you if you had to place Watford anywhere, don't be influenced by Lee's chat. <laughs> you, you, yeah. well, actually, no, in fact, she can be influenced by Lee's chat because I spoke to a Villa fan earlier in the week that convinced me they'll stay up with ease. So, I mean, go on, Paul. Hmm. I off the top of my head, I'm going to go 17th. Oh, just about su- just about survive. You take that, Lee. You take that, uh, take that yeah, Alex. What do you reckon? I'm going to go 19th. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and Lee, is this head or heart, or is this both? Where, where... Uh, European football, in that. <laughs> and um, I, to be honest. Anywhere outside the bottom three, I will. I'll snap. I'll snap at. But I think, um, I, I've, I've, this is what I said all the time when people have asked me this question. Give it fifteen games, and I'll tell you. Yeah. Um, we we need to see how this <laughs> team's gonna, how, how this <laughs> how this how this team's going to fit and how they how they start. You know, it could go a number of ways. But if go, I want a, I want an eight. I want a number. Ah, oh, not to get relegated. All right. 17th. 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 17th on goal difference. Okay, so moving on from we've got all the W's today. So uh, moving on from Watford, we'll go. We'll go off particularly. We'll go to West Brom next. Alex, you've had, you've had. I'd say you'd have a, you'd have a, you've had a quiet transfer window, and you had a very, you had a very in the deep. This is I'm trying to be as respectful as possible. You had a very West Brom season last season. Yeah. It, well, it was a season of two halves, really. You know, um, Mel left the end of. 2013-14 he was loved by the fans but we always knew it was coming and then we thought right who's going to be the new manager and Alan Irvine was announced and nobody knew who he was <laughs> and it was just everyone was kind of looking at each other and going well you know who is he what's he going to do and in the end he did nothing for six months and you know he was really worrying around December that we was going to get relegated and we've been in the Premier League for five years now which shocks a few people and eventually got the boot after a run of poor performances and then Tony Pulis coming as a shining light and Wow, that is a, that's a yeah. statement, isn't it? Yeah, we Tony flew Pulis, up the table. Tony Pulis, the shining light. The, <laughs> shining, the shining light of Birmingham. Oh, I like the sound of that. Um, <laughs> yeah, it, go on. I was going to say it just start, it started a bit dodgy and we had a couple of dodgy results under him but that run at the end of the season which was very well documented beating Palace away drawing with Liverpool beating Man United away uh, drawing with Newcastle and when we hammered Chelsea 3-0 at home you know it, it give fans quite a lot of optimism for next season yeah so I guess I want to talk about Pulis because I think Pulis is quite an interesting topic on his own almost that there's this idea of Pulis and there's the reality of Tony Pulis and how are we seeing that kind of that Stoke football that everyone sort of relates him to or is it is it a different story does he play more expansive stuff because you, I assume you watch more than anyone else who's here today so what what sort of football do West Ham West Ham sorry I've, that's <laughs> one of the biggest insults I could have thrown uh, what sort of football do West Brom play under Tony Pulis I think when he come in in January what he had to do was play to the strengths that was there we had no out and out wingers at the club except Chris Brunt when Tony Pulis come in and mm. Tony Pulis come in and made Chris Brunt a left back anyway but he did mm. bring in Callum McManaman and now he's brought in James McLean as well and pre-season he has been playing with those two on the wings more more of like he did at Palace with Belassi and Zahar in yeah. a four-three-three formation and with Berahino down the middle and it's been working so I think I don't think it's going to be the Stoke football bearing in mind they just come up from the championship and they was fighting for every point but if you look at Stoke now with the you know the f- how many Barcelona players have mm. got they're playing more fluid football and I think Pulis would have done that at Stoke he did it at Palace and I think he will bring it in at West Brom as well it's just getting the right players and playing to your strengths the goal of him last season was to survive and he did that comfortably in the end yeah you mentioned Berahino I, I guess it, once again there's going to be a lot pinned on him um, I get we we're, we're recording a week uh, previous to this coming out do you think he's, he'll, still, he'll still, be, uh, still be there by the end of August? Hundred and ten percent. You're you're, think, you're completely convinced he won't go. Yeah, I think next if he carries on like he did last season, I think next season there's nothing we can do. But 
he seems to be in a good place. There's reportedly going to be a new contract on the, the table. And I think it's just going to be best for all parties if he stays. And he seems happy at the club. He's been you know, playing well pre-season. He's been happy to play in all the games. So I'd, I'd be very, very surprised if he left. Is he is he your key man? Is he the guy that, if, if he doesn't play well, you ain't winning matches? Or are there is there other other sort of strings to West, uh, West Brom's bow? Um... I would say he's a lot on Berahino because if you look at our other strikers, I mean, we've got Victor and Ichabu, who is good, but he's never fit. And we've got Brown Adai, who come in for 10 million. He showed glimpses, but never really got going. So we struggle for goals. We desperately need another striker, which looks like it will be Ricky Lambert, who mm, of course. doesn't have a bad Premier League scoring record if you look at his time at Southampton. So, But we've also got other players in, if you look the likes of Darren Fletcher and Jolie and Lescott there, you know, they're so experienced and you can see that on the pitch that they're a step above everyone yeah. else. You get, you get the sense that's the kind of, those two players especially are the kind of players that Tony Pudis likes. He likes to have those sort of season pros yeah. to, uh, to, to coast through games. And with, it helps with bringing other him. players to the club as well. If of you course. seeing players of that calibre. With, with Lambert, do you think, do you think, could you see, you mentioned you're playing like, you're likely to play some sort of 4-3-3 with your two wide men with McManaman and McLean. If he brings Lambert in, I don't think Ricky Lambert wants to move unless he's going to play. So could you could you see Berahino and him playing together? I mean, obviously I've been a Liverpool fan. I can speak a little of Lambert as I've seen him this year. He looks like the, the kind of player that needs to play every week because that's how his fitness will develop. When he, when he came off for Liverpool, it was the kind of thing that if you brought him on, he wouldn't like he just he's not up to game speed, and it was it was hurt him, and, he, and you'd have this sort of negative image of Ricky Lambert playing. But really, if he's not playing every week, that's the Ricky Lambert you're going to get. So, could you see it being a front two, maybe, one day? Well, yeah, we played two. He, he trialled it last season, two up front. But I think it would work, because if Lambert will always find the space, he's a natural goal scorer, he knows where the space is on the pitch, he'll always bag a goal. And with the service of McManaman and McLean, that gives him two fast wingers. Berahino can also drift out wide or can drop back a little bit deeper. So, he... It could work, it could go terrible, but if we're not spending that much on him, he's definitely worth the risk because of his record, you know, through every league in English football, really. Yeah. Well, we'll ask the two, the two guys we've got with us. We'll start with you, Lee. Yeah. Are West, are West Brom the kind of team that you want to be finishing above going up? And to, and to be honest, I mean, this has been discussed quite a bit between Prince Watford fans and what kind of squad that, or quite, sorry, side that we may be coming up against and we actually we, I do pitch West Brom as probably one of the strugglers of what we're going to be around um, so I, I do look at them and they have some as you mentioned some season pros but as a squad I, I believe this is the type of squad that we need to be picking points off if we're going to survive whether it's ones or threes I don't think it really matters um, but we need to be picking points off these types of these types of teams I do think they will unless acquire a few more players as I mentioned the striker I think they potentially could struggle yeah. Um, but listening to Alex speaking there, he's he's picked up some really good points, and you know, it's it's a, it's, a, it's interesting. One, I mean, I'm interested in what he thinks about the James Chester transfer well, and, and, the, and the fee for that, really, because it's uh, a big fee. Eight million for James Chester from Hull, who have had a great couple of days. They've got Robbie Brady. Now, obviously, again, week, week before they might have done some more. They might have sold Hollister for forty at this point. We don't know. Yeah. <laughs> City are liable. Um, eight million for James Chester. It seems like a lot, but don't all the transfers this summer? Yeah, but. It- it's also worth noting it's only three million up front. The five million is add-ons and bonuses. Ah, ah okay. Okay. Uh, include, um, we've been got by the media there. Yeah. They've got us. <laughs> <laughs> um, a lot of its uh, appearances. I know there's also a clause in there about his appearances for the Welsh side because he's recently been called up into that. Okay. I've spoke to a lot of Hall fans. They seem quite good that he's left. They said he was one of their best players last season, but. You know, should we be signing relegated players? If you look at the likes of Watford, again, no yeah. disrespect, they're signing players above their position. Yeah, yeah, that, that know, was like kind of where group. I was heading with that one, really. It's like, I, I, we've not picked anything from within England, obviously. We've picked from abroad, but we've picked players from top tier in terms of where yeah. they're heading from. And also, they are internationals at first team level. Um, mm. Bar like Kapua, you, you've got a number of them that are from international first teams and that top tier level, which is interesting. Like we say, say we're picking above us, where that signing just seems to be picking from below. Yeah, Jones McLean's the same. He got relegated exactly, yeah. with Wigan last season, so he did, he's effectively a League One 
winger. Yeah. <laughs> we, we could all do with one of those. Um, Paul, Paul, thoughts on thoughts on West Brom? Yeah, I, looking at them, looking at the squad, they do look like a team that would struggle. I think the defence is pretty solid, and I think Chester is actually a really good player. I think I read on Twitter that he didn't make a single defensive error last season. So I think he's a pretty solid defender, and he'd be a good partner for Lescott. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think the defence is solid. But Foster's a good keeper. Uh, is he back from injury? Uh, October, he's back. Okay. But my hill's pretty well. good as well. Yeah. But I, just, I don't see anything. like Apart from Berahino, going forwards, there's not really anything there. But it's you've got Tony Pulis, and I can't see a Tony, Tony Pulis team going down. Yeah, Alex makes a good point. There's, we're we're pretty cool. There's 20, 30 days. There's a, there's a, there's a, there's a month left. Yeah. There's plenty so there's that could happen. Yeah. In the next week, you might sign a few players. So. I mean, I know Pulis is known for very, very, very solid defensive sides, isn't he? He likes a deadline yeah. day transfer as well. Does, uh, he does. Does Pulis. Uh, so, again, much like we did with Watford, we'll go along the line. Uh, we'll start with you, Foxy. Okay. What, what do you reckon? Where do, where do you see West Brom finishing? <sighs> Well, definitely in and around with us. Um, I'm going to say that I don't think they'll. I don't think they'll struggle as much as the likes of Sunderland will. Um, mm-hmm. But I <laughs> do think potential to be third or fourth from bottom. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Paul. Yeah, I would say um, like 19th, but because of Tony Pulis, I think 16th. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I, I'm exactly the same. I think I think that squad yeah. without Tony Pulis finishes in the bottom three. Bottom I think with three. Tony Pulis, you you grind out results and it's just a bit. And you get to the end of the season, you're you're still in the league. I think yeah. that's how it goes. I think, uh, I think he's he's definitely the superstar of the side for definite. <laughs> <laughs> Alex, Tony Pulis is your superstar, but where do you see where do you see him getting you uh, this season? I think you've been a bit harsh. We did finish thirteenth last season, and we did finish yeah. eighth three seasons ago. So, and that was under Steve Clark. So. Uh, that was quite a good. That, that was quite a good counter argument there. Quite a long time ago. <laughs> yeah, but um, I think good season, top ten, perhaps pushing to that group. I don't think we'll be anywhere near relegation. I think worst case fifteenth. Really, I, I yeah. like. There's a lot Positive. of positivity. I like mm. the positivity. I've, actually, with all the fans I've spoken to you so far, no one's been really down their club. Actually, I, I should say I've not spoken to Newcastle yet. But I mean, <laughs> but, so, so, so we could do. Uh, although for the viewers, I have spoken to Newcastle. It was yesterday. Go and have a listen. Um, mm. I think it's not a case of like... West Brom becoming weaker. Though I think it's more of a case of the teams around them becoming stronger. Yeah, it, yeah. it's how well the promoted teams start, which I think will impact. And a not lot just of the promoted teams either. Those teams that are that, that that dice with the with the bottom half. Yeah, it'd be interesting to see how Villa handle it, how exactly, uh, how yeah. Sunderland handle it, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. There's quite a few changes going on at those clubs as well. Um, Paul, it's your moment. West Ham United. You you are very busy. <laughs> uh, we are. Are, are you enjoying We've... the summer? Because it's sometimes West Ham don't do that much, <laughs> but this year, Billich has come in with his rock and roll band. Uh, yeah, I, rem- I remember last year on Twitter the fans just going crazy because we just weren't signing anyone and this year we've just got a load of business out of the way early on I think people still want us to sign a striker especially in pre-season we've been a bit iffy up front but I think our strikers are a bit inconsistent well Paul we spoke pre-recording we know that Carton Cole will be returning oh yeah he's, he's been released August. he's been released but we know he'll be at the training ground hiding in the showers already <laughs> <laughs> oh dear <laughs> what a thought that is he's doing a curly um, touring so you, I, before we talk about who you've brought, well, last season actually, how did last season go? Because you started with Big, well, you had Big Sam the whole time. Yeah, but, we, but well, it, we finished twelfth, um, average as usual. The mm. biggest disappointment was the fact that we didn't get plus goal difference yeah, for the first I, time ever in the Premier League. I saw we still got minus three. Fitted. We we finished fifth one year, and we still didn't get a plus goal difference. It's ridiculous. So <laughs> that was the, the most. Welcome to, the League. welcome to the Premier League. Welcome to the Premier League. But we uh, had an incredible start, obviously, and players like Alex Song, which was an unbelievable signing. To be fair. Um, had a really good first half of the season and Sacco had a really good first of the half of the season no one really expected him to do that coming from uh, League 2 in France Yeah. Um, so yeah but it just collapsed after Christmas we came down with the Christmas decorations as usual but in the summer well actually, well, no, actually I want to start on your outs because I think your outs are uh, mixed I would say so Carton Cole's finally actually gone I mean, it's yes. it's official. Apparently, apparently. Guy, Guy, Guy Demel's been released. Uh, yaskalainen has gone. Nene's That's, gone. Yeah. That that never really worked. The Nene transfer. Yeah, we, well, we didn't really. Sam didn't give him a go. He get played him in the last three minutes every game. And the and the news that a shot. I don't not just not just West Ham fans, but I think world football. That Stuart Downing has been has been sold to Middlesbrough. 
He's yeah, I, I think West Ham fans are disappointed by that. How are you coping um, personally with the loss of Stuart oh, Downing? I had to eat a bucket load of ice cream when I heard the news. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> well, just to make yourself feel sick, like I can imagine. Yeah, it. Well, you know, comfort eating. Comfort eating. <laughs> uh, but on your ends, <laughs> it's all looking quite rosy. Side Very of the season. Dimitri Payet, definitely. Do you think so? Do you think so, Foxy? Best signing of the the window? I think that is going to prove to be one of the signings of this season. And I don't mean like... Well, no, Mark, I think in terms of just... I I think it's class. I think it's absolutely class. He's got... He's got... He's got a free kick as well. He's got a bit of pace about him. He knows the pass. He knows where the goal is. Uh, He's kind of always gone under a radar on the European scene for quite a while. Um, I think probably because the French national team have such excellent players. He couldn't quite squeeze into it. He's got that 14 I think this... Yeah, this could be... This could be a big time for him. I think he's come. I think he's gone to the right side as well. I watched um, him in pre. I, I went to see them play Chelsea the other day. It was boring, no, no. But he he just looks above everyone else. The way he can yeah. find bring players into think, the game, where like he can find well, a pass from that, nowhere. That national scene. I think he wants to be involved in, and this is the perfect opportunity to put himself on that on that radar. Mm. Um, with the likes of you know, because he plays out wide, doesn't he? If I remember right, I, um, I know. Not, re- I think he plays as a cam. They put, really, they push him into a cam area, have they? Right, definitely is better there. Yeah, he yeah. Just I seems to be able to find everyone from the he's middle. Played, yeah, he's played wide a lot of his career so far, but I think that move inside will definitely Sp- enable yeah. him to unlock a few more defenses. Spe- and I think I think he's in the right league. Speaking to West Ham fans before the window, that was the one position I heard you want the most. Yeah, because but- we've been playing Kevin Nolan there. He's useless. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely yeah. lump. He's, Hate gone, him. he's gone as well, hasn't he? Has he gone yet? No, he's still there, unfortunately. He's still captain, technically. <laughs> will he not be, just will he be leaving? Surely he'll be going. I hope he goes. We've been, I think, but he's on about 50k a week. That's, I no, I know. I'll at Pulis, deadline date. He'll be in for <laughs> <I> think, <laughs> Yeah, definitely. <laughs> That'll be the move. We'll be going, who are we going to link up? Link up? Imagine that, Nolan Ryan and Anna Lambert. Chibi. Oh, my <laughs> word. That would be, and Anachibi, mate, that front three, that'd be deadly, <laughs> wouldn't it? Um, you've also put an up Bonner. You've got Jenkinson back on loan as well. Um, Good signing, yeah. And uh, Dimitri Peo, who could be. Uh, who was, Lanzini. Lanzini. On loan from uh, Al Jazeera. Al Jazeera. I, know, I don't meant know much to about to be him. a good player. He was tipped to be like the next Messi at one point, I think. Um, well, that's what YouTube said, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> the amount of next Messi. Marco Marin's been the next Messi for about 10 years. Yeah. So, I mean, <laughs> but he, he's meant to be pretty good. I think it's he's an unpredictable one. We'll see what happens, but it's a gamble worth paying. He's only on loan. We've got yeah. an option to sign him. So if he's good, we'll sign him. If he's not, then we'll are go you, back home. Have they, uh, well, has Bilic fixed the problems that you thought you need, or are you still thinking again? Uh, I've said this about four still times. still slightly worried about up front, simply because Andy Carroll... When he is What's fit, up with Carol these days? What's when he doing? he's fit, he's unplayable, and he, he's, he's, there's no way of stopping him. But obviously, he's injured 360 days of the year, so yeah, he will but do Sapu's that. Sapu's good, but I think he's a bit inconsistent at times. Valencia definitely is inconsistent. He he's occasionally produces an amazing goal, like the one against Hull last year. Um, he's fast, but I think he's really a winger. Um, Zarate has got skill, a, a very technical. Um, can't doubt that at all, but. Uh, whether he'll do it this year for West Ham remains to be seen he is... he's been a frustration hasn't he really because he, yeah, really he blew on, he blew on to the scene as a youngster and everyone was expecting so much from him and he ultimately has never really ever blown has he he's had so much potential as you mentioned him and Messi were mentioned in the same bracket for a long time a long time I remember yeah. and he's then on it's FIFA just... isn't he like people talk about him being like there's, a, a, there's a FIFA YouTuber <laughs> that's got a bit of love for him yeah, yeah, yeah I'm, sure, I'm sure people are is aware it? <laughs> yeah, he's he does, he's he's been around a bit recently. Yeah. Um, um, and the other guy, the the man, the myth, the legend, Medibo Maiga. Is he still there? Is he still there? Yeah, yeah, he's, come come back. he's been on loan last year, and he's come back. And <laughs> I really want it to work out for him. I feel so sorry for him. Didn't he life. score two goals against Chelsea the once? Uh, I, no, that was the army. I think he scored against Spurs in the League Cup, and he was a hero for like two days, and that was it. <laughs> so, Paul, in terms of key players. What are you expecting? Who do you think will be the... St- who should we be looking out for, is my question. Definitely Joey O'Brien. Okay, I feel I feel like you're being facetious before. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Dimitri Payet, of course, he's going to be... I, I'm expecting him to be amazing. I hope he doesn't disappoint now. But well, I think he, he can take us to the next level. Um, as long as there's a striker that sticks his chances away. That yeah. player creates because he are will you, no doubt create chances. Are you pleased with Billich? We didn't really talk about it, but it is a it's yeah. a big it's a very big change from having Allardyce. I think he was like third or fourth choice in the end, but um, was it really? Well, we we're going for some unrealistic managers. 
like oh, okay. Rafa Benitez. Yeah, I, I remember so we, that. So we weren't going to get him, but obviously it was nice that we were showing. Thinking another word here. <laughs> well, you, you were looking. You were looking for a manager <laughs> that was above your. Uh, looking for a man that was above your station. Yes, but we're, you, we're, but you we're, went for it anyway. I'm glad that we're ambitious in that way, and we we were looking to to get those sort of managers. But I'm pleased yeah. with Bilic. I think um, he played. He played some nice football in pre-season. We just haven't scored enough goals, but we've been passing it around nicely, and that's what the fans want. Yeah, At the how, end of the day, we don't really care if we lose half the time. How <laughs> as are long you as we're uh, passing it around? How are you enjoying the Europa League? <laughs> Oh, it's been a been a bit of a marathon, hasn't it? Getting through on penalties last week. Obviously, when this comes out, we might actually be out the Europa League. Let's let's see me let's see me not. Yeah. Um, are you are you worried? Like many teams are. I saw, like Everton are a good example of a team that did not enjoy it last year. I'm. I think West Ham fans in general are quite looking forward to it because we've not been in Europe for ages. Yeah. Um, it could completely flop, and I suppose there'll be people out there that say we will really struggle in the league because of it but I think when Fulham got to the Europa League final a few years ago they finished top 10 mm. so it's not always the case yeah. and they started in the first qualifying round as well so they had all those millions of games to play that so, fair play you know, bloody fair never play never know never yeah. know uh, so again we'll go, we'll go along the line we'll start with you Lee what are you expecting our West Ham uh, this coming season uh, I'd, I'd say mid to higher tables to be honest um, I really think that if as Paul just mentioned, and I, I hate it when people say, "Oh, they're in Europe, so they're going to they're going to flop in the league." I, I don't think that's a thing. If the squad's got depth, you know, and just sometimes these are early preseason games, which aren't preseason games, they have a competitive edge to them, can be more helpful than preseason games because uh, they're taken a little bit more serious, and you can't make eleven changes at half time. Um, so I don't know. I think I think they really could they could push on this year. I think they've made some excellent acquisitions, and as mentioned, I think Payet could turn out to be the signing of the season um, for for value to what he brings to the side. Um, but no, I, I, I've I always liked West Ham. I've got uncles that are, that are West Ham fans and I've grown up watching a lot of West Ham. So I, I hope they do well and I think they'll do well as well. Where would you, um, pl- where would you place them? Back around similar to where they finished last year, but maybe just a little bit more to impo- Hopefully a positive goal scoring. Yeah, I hope so. Nice. I don't care if we finish bottom as well. <laughs> <laughs> if you, I said, no, I think... Paul, I'll say now, Paul, if you finish bottom and have a positive goal difference, I'll do whatever you want. <laughs> just, just name it and I'll do it. <laughs> Oh god! I think though, I think Village has an edge to him, which um, it will hopefully rub off on the players and a little bit, a little bit more aggressive, isn't he? I guess in his uh, in his approach, and he's he's a former player as well, isn't he? If I remember rightly. Oh yeah, he is. Played but, for like thirty games or something. I think he played about fifty games back in ninety six, ninety seven, ninety. But he's treated like mm. the, the biggest cult yeah, figure you've ever had. Like, oh, the biggest like. cult hero ever. Now. Yeah, uh, Alex. Summer. Alex, where do you see uh, the hammers ending up? Uh, but do you, do you think you'll be above them? I guess is the best question. Um. Probably not. No, I've, I've tipped West Ham to do really well this season. I think they could break into that. Perhaps not top seven clubs. That may be a bit far fetched at the moment, but they should certainly be looking at a top half finish. You know, they could go quite far in Europe as well if you know, bit of luck. You know, don't get drawn against two harder teams. But uh, hopefully they suffer another four 0 loss in the cup to West Brom as well. <laughs> <laughs> as long as Paul gets his positive goal difference, he doesn't care what happens in the <laughs> cup. He's not bothered. Uh, so Paul, I guess we'll I'm gonna leave it with you, Paul. I'm, actually, well, now I'm going to jump in. I think you'll finish tenth. Okay. I think tenth is where you'll be. So uh, where, where you're right. at, what you're um, at, what are you thinking? The thing is, everyone's tipping us to do well now. It's all, it's not going to be a surprise if we do do well. I so, think I think Europe will hurt. Which is you a bit actually. annoying. I I think <laughs> if you didn't have Europe, you'd be you'd be in that eighth seventh spot. We but might go out I, against FC Astra or Vauxhall Astra, whatever they're called. If you go out to a team which you've just called Vauxhall Astra, I mean, Vauxhall Astra, blimey, brilliant. So, um, I, I think tenth, realistically. Yeah. Um, I would hope for eighth, seventh, possibly. I'd love us to have a cup run as well because we haven't won the FA oh, Cup since nineteen eighty. So, sound like a new it'd be nice fan. to win a cup. Even if it, <laughs> I mean the Europa League would be the dream because then you qualified for the Champions League. That would yeah. be amazing. Champions League, isn't it? In this Olympic Stadium next year, it'd be unbelievable, but very, very unlikely. Okay, well, uh, I think that gentlemen brings us round about to the end. But it's uh, it's been a pleasure. Uh, thank you to Lee, Alex, and Paul for joining me on uh, this. Okay. This well, this concludes it, boys. You're you're, you're seeing us out here. This, mm. this is this is the end now. Um, but yeah, thank you, Lee, for coming on. I appreciate you you being here. Thank you for having me, uh, Alex. Same with you. Welcome. Well, you, you're welcome back as well, by the way. But Alex, yeah, thanks for coming on. No worries. Uh, and Mr. Paul Holden, thanks for your, Thank your West Ham you. insight. Right then. Looking forward to the season. 
Yeah, me too. Uh, hopefully you'll all come on again when when your clubs are having some sort of meltdown because I think that's always the most entertaining. <laughs> I mean, that's uh, no difference. <laughs> <laughs> so, indeed. So, uh, so from me and the guys, thank you for watching this week. I hope you enjoyed it and uh, we'll see you next time with, with love with care from me, Dr. Benji. Goodbye.